everybody. Welcome to Friday Fun. Well, this is the music that we were playing on our very first Friday Fun all those Why months ago. So and today we have a special edition. Yay! We are honoring one of our favorite people at Westminster. Let's see if you can guess who it is. Here's a picture of his, well, when he was a baby. So cute and smiley. And... Yep, it's our own John Muntz. Here's what he looks like today. So this whole show is to honor him. We want to celebrate John, even though we can't be together in person, um, because he is just recently officially retired from being on our Westminster staff. Although, luckily and thankfully, he and Ibby are going to still be in town. John is still going to be adding to our worship service and to our community, so that's exciting. Um, he didn't want any fanfare, so he's kind of been there and done that, so I promise, no fanfares. Okay, so you see, that's not a fanfare. That's the beginning of a Bach Brandenburg Concerto, and he loves Bach, just like he loves Willie Nelson. That's why I'm playing these things. Okay, here we go. John Linton Muntz was born in Cincinnati, and he moved to California when he was 15, but he is a huge fan of all things Cincinnati to this day. Here are he, he's on the left, and the right is his brother Paul, and that cute little girl there is his sister Marty. And here's another really awesome picture of John when he was about 12. But I think my favorite is coming right up, and that's him as a scout. I just love that. And I think he's still a good scout. All right, here are some special messages from the staff. That's a fanfare. He said no fanfares. Oh, come on, Melissa. That's the Cincinnati Orchestra. And French horns. Hello. I've had the privilege of working with John for a little over three years now, and in that short amount of time, there are so many things that I've come to love and appreciate about him. The first is his ability to listen. I feel like John really gives his full attention to whoever is speaking and leaves them feeling appreciated and valued. Another thing I love about John is his depth. John is one of the wisest, most knowledgeable people I know, and he brings that wisdom to every interaction he has, but in a really humble way, and I love that. A third thing I love about John is his heart. John is one of the most caring and thoughtful people I've ever met, and he always has the right thing to say in the right moment. Whether it's an easy moment or a hard moment, he knows what to say and how to ease that situation. So there are so many more things that I could say, but those are the three that I'll stick to. And congratulations, John, I'm so happy for you. And I love you, bye. Hey John, um, I'm not sure I'll say anything that doesn't echo sentiments shared by others, but I just wanted to say uh, how much of a pleasure it's been to work with you. In my short time on staff, um, I've enjoyed your calming presence uh, and your ability to look at issues in practical and meaningful ways. Um, I've loved every sermon that I've heard you say. I think you have a really great gift with words. Um, and. I know I'll still see you around, so I won't say I'll miss you, but it's been a really enjoyable experience working with you. So, all the best in your retirement. Our Pastor John served nine churches in the course of his career, um, anywhere from Darlington, Maryland, to First Pres in Glendale, Ohio, where he actually did a pastoral exchange in New Zealand for a year there. How cool is that? Rochester, New York, Grand Rapids, Michigan, Fort Thomas, Kentucky, Lake Park, Florida, Solon, Ohio, um, Washington Press in Cincinnati, and finally in 2008 here at Westminster. Yay! And here are some pictures Ibby helped us get. This is 1968 with John's ordination, and this is his daughter Sarah with him. And this picture is from the early 80s, downtown Prez in Rochester, New York. And here's our distinguished Reverend Muntz at Emmanuel Prez at Lake Park, Florida. And here he is at Pioneer Prez in Solon, Ohio, where he was right before he came to Westminster. Yay! John was the person who got to send us off on our pilgrimage in 2014 because Buren was already on his way there. And we also had the pleasure of John helping lead us through projects like WOW, this is Win Our World Ministry, 
And one summer, John and Ivy's granddaughter, Grace, got to join us. John is anything but common. John, uh, you know how much I've enjoyed working with you, how much I appreciate your wisdom and the, your gentle spirit and your kindness, but I do have one little bone to pick with you. When you were on staff, you were the old dude on staff. And now that you've left, I'm the old dude on staff. It's not how I wanted it, that to turn out. I'm just taking a little time out in the studio to tell John how much he means to me. I'm so glad that I've gotten to know him while I've been working on staff. He's so gentle and so kind and loves us so fully. And I've just really, really enjoyed being around you. Well, that one's okay. And here's the beautiful Munts family. Let's see, the back row would be Laura, and then Jenny, and then John, and then Sarah, and seated are Ibby and George. And here they are, a little bit more grown up. And then this next picture is, is with John with his favorite teacher. His favorite teacher is his daughter, Laura Joy who actually taught at his elementary school. Her kindergarten classroom was John's second grade classroom. So that's pretty amazing. And here are the grandchildren. This is George and Grace. They live just up the road in Nashville. And then next we have Seth as a newborn baby. All the grandkids call John Opa. And Seth's brother, Standing beside John at the beach, his name is Jonas. And then finally, we have a much loved family member. This was their dog, Chester. Barbara, stop. It's Puccini. When we first started attending Westminster in 2012, John had just begun a short interim job at Farragate Presbyterian Church, so it took me a little while to get to know him well. But it didn't take me long to recognize his skill as a preacher and a teacher. He always seems to have just the right turn of phrase, and his quiet wisdom shines through in each sermon. He has a wealth of theological knowledge that he's shared with us through the years. I learned something new from him in every sermon. About a year after we became members, I started to feel a call to get some theological education. My application to Austin Seminary needed a signature from a minister, and Buren was on sabbatical that summer, so I took the application to John. He asked me to tell me more about what I was experiencing. I told him that God was telling me to do something, but I wasn't sure what I was being told to do. So I figured the first step was to get some education. His response to me was classic. I'm glad you aren't sure what God is telling you, he said. I always worry about people who say they know what God is saying to them. Then he signed the form and the rest is history. After I joined the Westminster staff to coordinate the adult education program, I was grateful to be able to call on him to teach classes on some thorny issues. He addressed issues like same-sex same -sex marriage, immigration, and gun control thoughtfully and calmly. On a personal level, I've sought counsel from John for so many reasons. He always listened to me carefully, was completely honest, even if he didn't say what I wanted him to say, and supported me when I needed it. I can't express how grateful I am for that. I also want to express my appreciation to Ibby for her participation in occasional services like evening prayer services. Her musical expertise is um, invaluable and her deep faith also shines through in everything that she does. 
I'm so glad John and Ibby aren't leaving us and we will still be able to benefit from their participation in new ways. John and Ibby, I wish you grace and peace as you enter this new chapter in your lives. Hi, John. Happy retirement. Well, I guess it only took you 12 years. We're glad it, that you spent 12 years being part of our staff. It's just been such a blessing. You have such a calm and wise presence. It's really been wonderful to be a colleague. It's been wonderful to be a parishioner and just enjoy, enjoy all that you have to offer. Um, we're especially glad that you are going to continue to be part of our community and um, stay here and just continue the journey together. That's awesome. I want to give a special thank you to you for the work that you have helped with the youth. In July, uh, that's usually when Buren takes his vacation time. And so that means that for our July service projects, you are often the person commissioning everybody. And it's projects like the first, uh, I particularly remember the first pilgrimage. And, and Buren couldn't be there because he was riding his bike to come see us out there. So that was pretty awesome. Um, then also you have commissioned us for WOW, the urban ministry here in town for Operation Backyard, which is a ministry here in town, and then also for Appalachia Service Project. So that's pretty awesome. You always had such a great way of sending us out, and I know that everybody is so appreciative and remembers that so fondly. And not only that, you would show up later in the week if we were here in town. So you might be leading a worship service, or you might just come and hang out at the picnic and just enjoy hearing about what's going on. So that just means the world to us. Thank you. Um, so I hope you enjoy your retirement. I know you will. It's going to be really awesome once we're not stuck at home and you can go do things out in the world. Until then, we'll just enjoy having you to ourselves. Thank you. Do I have to tell you, no fanfares. <laughs> yeah, I just like this one. It's been one of the great blessings in my life to know and to work with John. I've learned much from him and benefited greatly from our years together here at Westminster. Over the years, I've looked to John for wisdom, appreciated his thoughtfulness, insight, experience, humility, honesty, generosity, warmth, and his genuine interest in every person. I've relied on his counsel, appreciated and admired his passion for ministry, and been amazed at how quickly he adapted to our staff and immediately began to enrich our work together. Thanks be to God for his providence in bringing John and Ibby into our midst. Thank you, John. Greetings from the church office. We sure have missed you during this pandemic and we appreciate your patience and your support through this. Today, I'd love to talk to you about our wonderful staff member, John Muntz. Just what an amazing man he is. Um, throughout these years that we've worked together, I think John started in 2008. I've had the joy of working beside him and just seeing his 
ministry here uh, just blossom and benefit so many of us. I think the word that describes him most would be supportive. He's just incredibly through the um, start of his ministry here. I think Bjorn started in 06 and he started in 08. I think he's done a great job in supporting Bjorn's ministry, whether it's um, from the pulpit or liturgy or um, pastoral care. It's just amazing what John has done. He's just so loving and um, just real, I think is what I would describe as John, that um, especially through um, the untimely death of his sweet Laura Joy, his daughter through breast cancer, I think his grief is real. And I think all of us that have gone through some traumatic losses, um, I love seeing how he questions and he wrestles with God through his grief. And he's taught me to um, be okay with that as um, long as we circle around and give God the glory through all our wonderful times. But I love that about John, just um, being real and how he has taught us how a positive way to deal with sadness in the world as well as our joys. So thank you, John, for that. I think he's supportive in um, all of our ministries where my involvement with fellowship ministry, uh, John and Ibby are always there to um, have a beer and watch the Smokies game together each year or at the Breakfast in the Smokies. He and Ibby are always there to support that. Um, progressive dinners and uh, all church retreats that we've had. He has been an integral part on that. Um, my goodness, there are so many wonderful things I can say about John, but I am excited for him that he now gets to retire and spend time with his sweet Ibby once this um, crazy and sad pandemic gets uh, away from us and uh, we can learn to live with that. But um, I just, I think the world of you, John, and I appreciate how you have loved and supported us um, all throughout our years. I also want to say how intuitive he is. I remember when he first started working here, he was um, coming into the office one day and he said, well, hello, sunshine. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is awesome. That is what my mama called me. So from that day forward, that's um, what we call each other, which is true joy. And he does give me sunshine in life. So happy retirement, John. I'm glad you get to stay here because Westminster is a better place because of you. God bless you. What about the one with the minions? We're ready to go. Well, we're talking with our dear friend John Montz, who's uh, been trying to retire for about 15 years now oh at least <clears throat> and we just we just won't we just won't let him retire but uh we just wanted to, to talk with you a bit john and talk about your life and your ministry and and those kinds of things because uh, you've you've been here now 11 years 12 12 well, I started years. december of uh 2008 yeah that's that's always fascinating that you know, I've only been here two years longer, longer than, than John has. Uh, tell us a little bit about your career starting off. I, I don't know if you and I have talked about this before. Did you start off a, as a solo somewhere or an associate? And oh, I started so, off uh, as an undergraduate in college. I started off studying um, accounting. I was going to be an accountant. I have a bachelor's of business administration degree. And... Uh, I was going to be an accountant, and I even even got into grad school to study for an MBA, and pretty soon uh, concluded that wasn't what I was meant to do. Uh, there's no no passion. I had no passion for accounting. I was good at it, I guess, but but I had no passion for it. And then I kind of floundered around for a couple of years and um, decided I was being called to ministry. Yeah. So I. Uh, <laughs> I took a year of Greek and didn't cool. learn a lot of Greek before I went to Louisville Seminary and then I transferred to Princeton and graduated from Princeton. Um, so I was uh, 28 years old and had a child by the time I started my first uh, uh, ministry. And I, I did a little calculating last night and um, I've been pastor of five congregations. I've been interim at four churches. And I've been a member of eight different presbyteries along the way. Sounds like I couldn't keep a job, doesn't it? <laughs> but actually, uh, I enjoyed every one of the 
Well, with one exception, I enjoyed every church that I that I have served. And I, that was, was, and I still have good friends for most of them. So. And you've been in different roles, I mean, associate or head of staff, and I was never an associate until oh, I came okay. to Westminster and and found you. Ah. <laughs> you, you seemed to want some help, so yeah. uh, I was glad to take on that role here. Yeah. How has uh, some ways, and we'll talk about both of these, uh, for better or for worse, but in your time in the ministry, how has the nature of ministry changed, do you think, in some various ways? And I mean, I, uh, you've got a couple of years on me, but even in my ministry, you know, the, it seems weird to say that the first five years of my ministry, we didn't have email. Yeah, you know, oh, yeah. <laughs> we didn't have the internet. Yeah, it was '92. You know, this came along in what '97, yeah. yeah. something like that. And so, just to think about how that has changed the way we communicate with with people in the congregation and stuff. So, and as you look back over your career, what are what are some ways just the nature well, of ministry has changed? Fundamentally, it's it's not changed. Fundamentally, it's it's proclaiming the gospel and and um, having a sensitive heart for for people and building community, but. The technological technological changes, as you suggest, have been tremendous. I mm -hmm. mean, uh, we do so much more online on the screen now than we used to, and especially in this pandemic, we're really learning how to do that, aren't we? Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, the fundamentally, it's still community. It's a community of faith that cares about uh, cares about each other, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, the theology has evolved, although I think it's basics, uh, basic reform theology has, has stayed the same um, as a foundation of what we do and how we practice uh, our faith. Are there some trends in <clears throat> the church of Lord that, that, that worry you? That... Yes, yes, the, cap the, the captivating of the church uh, for political purposes. That, that concerns me most of all. <clears throat> And we see too much of that today. I, early in my ministry, I, we had to be apolitical. And I guess we still do. But, um, but I see the church dividing over not theological matters, but political issues. Did, um, are there trends that you are encouraged by? That as you look forward, yes, um, the openness of of, of uh, congregations like ours, uh, the non-judgmental stance that we take when we, we proclaim the good news and not the bad news, and, and that's that's a very encouraging trend. I think. It's not universal by any means, but it's a, it's a trend that I see within the Presbyterian family that's encouraging. It, as you look back at yourself, have, have you, you know, maybe not fundamentally changed your theology or anything, but um, you identify places where you felt like you've you've grown or you have evolved on something or things like that? Uh, oh, I, I'm sure many more than even I'm aware of. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, I, I worked too hard at ministry in the beginning, I think. And over the years, I've discovered that it's, it's really a joy. It's a joyous uh, calling. And, and uh, if you don't take it too seriously, you're probably more effective. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's interesting. As it, if you look back, are there, I mean, like you said, it's all a joy, it's all blessings. Uh, are there are there particular blessings along the way? I mean, that you look back at a particular church or something, and just uh, a ministry that you accomplished or some. I often think that when my time was finished here, the thing I'll look back on is like these infant baptisms. Absolutely. You know, they, yeah. <laughs> it just oh, uh, yeah. something about those just kind of uh, just bond you with this family and the congregation and it's just, you know, it's like, uh, are there episodes like that that yes. stick out? Yes. yes. Weddings, funerals, baptisms are the, are the really the, the uh, mileposts, I think, but especially baptisms. Mm -hmm. I, you know, it's just such a thrill to 
to take an infant in your arms and, and have the parents there and, and, and do that, that dedication, the promises that are made, the promises made by the congregation. And, uh, as, as often as possible, I would, I would carry the child, or if it was a toddler, walk with the child down the, down the aisle and say, these are your people, you, know, you have a new family, a new family. Um, and funerals, gosh, so many good people that, uh, that uh, we've said goodbye to over the years. And, uh, those are memorable. And of course, the weddings. Sometimes <laughs> weddings are horror stories, <laughs> but uh, many times, if you know the, the couple and the families, they're just joyous, such joyous occasions. And ongoing friendships we have with people from Florida, people from Ohio, um, even some friends from New York. Um, that, that are just treasures to us. Yeah, we have a, a ministers gathering that sometimes gets together with all the ministers in Westminster and retired ministers, and there's some really good stories, and quite a few of them have involved incidents at, yeah. at weddings. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. um, that used to, used to be an old joke that uh, when I was in seminary that that tall steeple pastors always boasted about their biggest achievement was was a new building. You know, I, I built this building. And many times it was named after them. I wondered, where's, when's the Phillips building going to be built here? <laughs> um, but I, 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 in one congregation in uh, Solon, Ohio, we, we did build, uh, remodeled really, and enlarged the building, very modern building that we worshiped in and gathered in. And uh, I'm kind of proud of that too. Yeah. Uh, Along the way, I know you and Ibby had a chance to work together. Is that right? Thank you. For, thank you for asking. I was it, looking for a way to bring that in up. A, yeah. In a particular congregation, Deborah and I did that in, in, yeah. a, in a church in Florida. It was a small church, and so I was the pastor, and yeah. she was the DCE and yeah. the youth director. And, the, and well, she, was, she was Barb and Mary and yeah, Ellie, yeah. all kind of you know, and Reed too. Yeah. You know. Oh, yeah. Well. Uh, Ibby would not want any of those jobs, but uh, <laughs> she is a she is a highly trained professional musician, as you know. And in three of the congregations we serve, she was director of music. In fact, in our two longest pastorates, that in, in South Florida and in Northern Ohio, uh, she was director of music. Uh, and, and I think we've made a, a wonderful partnership. Um, uh, got along, uh, you know. The old joke is the music department is the war department. <laughs> but uh, that wasn't always true for us. We, we really collaborated very effectively, I think. And she, she wrote service music, which we used regularly. We even collaborated on a hymn one time. So, uh, yeah, she was, she was a very important part of the ministry that I enjoyed and we enjoyed together. Did, did, did you have times, not conflict, but did, did you have times where you disagreed on something or... I would, I would outline my sermons uh, by text and title and sort of had a general idea of subject about six or eight weeks in advance. And I would I had chart it all out on a spreadsheet, not on a, we didn't have computers in those days, I couldn't do that, but it was a big sheet of paper. And I'd take it home and, and have her select the hymns that would be appropriate. And she, I'd get a call from the, from the piano keyboard and she'd say, what are you talking about on July 27th? I said, I have no idea. <laughs> so sometimes uh, that was that was an interesting point of, of uh, conversation. But as far as selection of music, appropriate music, she was always on the money. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, that, didn't, that didn't surprise me. We, yeah. we, we had a, one incident, and it, it's funny as we look back on it now, but we were, <clears throat> it was the first church in Deborah served for six months as the as the music director. And at one point, I was battling on him in the sermon, and I didn't know what she had picked for the anthem. And the sermon, as best I can rem remember, was that we have uh, too irreverent or not enough reverence for God. You know, we keep referring to God as our friend, our pal, this kind of thing. <laughs> sure enough, as the anthem starts, she kind of looks at me and shakes her head, and they were doing what a what friend, friend we have in Jesus. Jesus of course. <laughs> Okay, we didn't coordinate on this very well, but it turned out fine. Uh, anything else you want to share or observations? Oh, well, I, 
you know, as I said to you over in the office, I've been doing this for 52 years. So I could go on for hours probably, but I don't think we want to do that. Um, maybe the happiest uh, discovery that I made through all of this was when we moved to, uh, to Knoxville in the um, end of 2008. I was, I'd been retired, I thought, for a couple of, well, for about 18 months. And I had lots of friends and activities in Cincinnati, but I thought, Knoxville, what am I going to do in Knoxville? And I thought, well, I've got a little life left in me. I'll look around and see if there's an interim pastor I can do. And up on the website, uh, Pops Westminster Church is looking for an interim associate pastor. I thought, well, okay, we'll, we'll see about that. Ibby, who lived here for uh, the early part of her life, had no knowledge of Westminster Church. She'd sung in churches all around the city, but but not Westminster. So we looked on the map, we found Westminster, and heard Buren Phillips preach. Um, that was probably in the fall of 2008. And I thought, oh, yeah, let's talk about this. So uh, Catherine Oakes was the chair of the committee uh, that was looking to fill the position. I had no idea that she was the daughter of the previous pastor. And we entered into conversation, and this you and I met, and you asked me about my theology, and I stammered around and said, well, I think I'm a Calvinist. <laughs> Um, and, and coming here and, and being able to practice ministry without having the, the heavy burdens that the head of staff has was just the, be the greatest blessing that I've had. That was, that was just wonderful. So these 12 years have been just right for a, a retired pastor, and uh, now I can sort of uh, coast a little more, I guess. And the beautiful thing, as I said in that article in the uh, Abbey, is that we get to stay here and be part of the community. Well, well, we're all we can get along with the pastor. Like that's, right. that's right. Well, we're all we're all happy about that. I, you know, I've said I've said before on different occasions. I think to the community and to you and to you and Evie and Deborah that uh, your time here has. We, I think it's been wonderful for the community and for me personally. It has. It was just a godsend. Uh, and I, I, no overstatement. Your length here may be. <laughs> the reason my length here has been uh, as it has, I, I think it was the right time for uh, for the gifts that you brought, mm -hmm. and uh, for me having uh, this that kind of a older, a little bit older than me, uh, <laughs> a little more that, but that that sounding board from someone you know who's who's been there, done that, and uh, I was trying to think back. I don't. I can't think of anything that, like at a session meeting or something that we disagreed on. There may have been, may have been a couple of times where I might have said, John, what would you do there? And you said, well, I may go A, and I ended up thinking, well, I think I'm going to go B. Sure. And as soon as I said that, you were like, okay, then let's go. You yeah. know, and, and it was just... Such a wonderful support having that there with, with no agenda but to. How can I help this community and help your ministry? And that that has meant more to me than you know you could you could uh, uh, possibly realize. And uh, I know we all just uh, have appreciated your time here and offering your gifts and uh, just part of the life of this community, well, we uh, you and Ibby both, and so we are uh, we are a grateful people, and a better people for having had you in our midst. <clears throat> well, I, as you know, I've also be, been able to become active in the Presbytery of, of uh, East Tennessee, and, and pastors I meet often come to me and say, what's going on at Westminster that you keep growing and, and, and everything is going so well? And I, and I say, well, it's uh, strong lay leadership, for one thing. It's uh, a scholarly, relevant preaching. It's uh, high-quality music and traditional worship. Um, I think you know, the myth, I call it a myth, is that people don't want to worship in traditional ways anymore. But we do it, and it succeeds mm -hmm. because it's to relate. It's relative. It's been interesting in the midst of this <clears throat> pandemic <huh? laughs> There's such a craving now for, for traditional yeah, yeah. in-person worship yeah. gathering. Yeah, we miss it. Yeah, we miss it. Yeah. We miss it. We sure do. Well, 
again, we had, we just wanted to do this to uh, as a one way of showing our appreciation uh, for your your ministry, your career, uh, and for your gifts to particular to Westminster Presbyterian Church. Well, thank you. Uh, you assembled, you assembled an excellent support staff, and program staff, and, and things are going on. I, I treasure, both of you and I treasure our, our friendship with you and Deborah and, and larger congregations. This has been great. It's, it's, it's been a blessing for us. Thank you. Thank you, John, and thank you, Ibby. I hope you don't mind a little bit of fanfare anyway. We wanted to say a proper thank you. And it's nice that we have this virtual way of doing it until we see each other in person. All right. Love to everyone in the congregation. We will see you Sunday.